this chapter, I feel like you could just take it panel by panel, page by page, and just have a discussion on each page, because each page just gives you so much to work with. Maybe that's exactly what we should do. <laughs> I do have something to say about the very first page. First of all, I love that Oda does a little mini story arcs. I don't feel, I'm sure other mangas do do it, or have done it in the past, but I feel like Oda is kind of like his little signature thing. Uh, I really haven't seen it anywhere else, but it actually gives a lot of good information. It has in the past, and it does right now. Um, Leo getting the spot for bodyguard during the reverie is going to be huge. I think that's actually going to play into larger events. How else are the Straw Hats going to get all this wealth of information? It's not like the King of Totland. It's not like um, King of Alabast is going to get them on the Den Den Mushi, give them the breakdown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now Straw Hat one of his, has one of his captains. Yeah. And, and, like, the things just go together so nicely for the Straw Hats. Big news, Big Bird, finding out that the Straw Hats sent the <laughs> Big bomb news, present. Big Bird, that's exactly who he is. <laughs> what a scoop! What a scoop! Who is this? Oh, but him, him finding out that the Straw Hats purposely sent the bomb to Big Mom's wedding and then show up to crash it, the Straw Hats get credit for that, even though they had nothing to do with it, really. Um, and now... Uh, with um, Straw Hats unintentionally having a spy at the Reverie, who's going to give them all the information they could probably oh, need about yeah. current events and big secrets between Absolutely. all the highest ranking kings and emperors in the New World. Yeah, that's huge. And let's also talk about how <clears throat> good the fairies are at stealth and stealing. Yeah, so exactly. if they were to hand out some sort of secret code or plan or some sort of blueprint, or um, let's say they w were gonna schedule like a secret meeting to address like Straw Hat or something like that. They Absolutely. could info even if they weren't invited or King Rico wasn't included, they could still be there and surveil the entire thing. Um, I'd be wondering if they if they'd um, cut the reverie into different parts like that, like cut him cut him out of that discussion about the Straw Hats because they know that he's obviously a fan of the Straw Hats versus all the other kings who may not like him so much. Yeah, clearly he's going to be biased because Straw Hat liberated his kingdom. I, the tragedy of Dressrosa can't be a secret to anybody. Uh, excuse us, that's the fire alarm. But yeah. Cutting him out of that, the top, they could be just in his hair, one of his tufts of hair, or hiding in <laughs> the, in, inside his cloak or cape or in his front pocket. With, with, a, with a little Den Den Mushi exactly. recording the whole thing. I don't even think they need a Den Den Mushi. Just like them word of mouthing it to the Straw Hats or like them just hearing about it, especially if the conversation goes into the Straw Hats and how they need to be dealt with and a plan is enacted towards that end, definitely they're going to have to say something to Luffy. Mm. They owe, it, owe yeah. him everything. Yeah, I don't think they would hesitate to. Um, something I wanted to talk about. So, Luffy has now trampled over three warlords. Crocodile, Moria, now Doflamingo, who before this seemed almost untouchable. Between mm. his connections and his army and himself being an awakened fruit user who had clearly ha was able to wield all three forms of Aki. Um... So there's a slot open right now, and also now that Luffy has fucked with Big Mom, do you think that some of the kings at the Riviere would petition that Luffy fill the spot of Warlord? Now, I certainly I don't, think they'd think about it. I think they're going to think about it because at this point, Luffy's completely destroying everything he comes into contact with. Absolutely. If he doesn't like you, Nobody if he doesn't like your or organization, he's going to punch his way through it until it's in complete shambles. So, at this point, I think they'd want to offer him the position. I don't think Luffy would ever accept the position. Of course not. He screams Pirate King every time. Pirate Jan King. Every time he punches somebody in the face, he screams Pirate yeah. King. It's very clear what Luffy wants. Yeah. We've settled <laughs> with the title of Warlord. I don't think so. Yes, we have settled. Settle. Um, and I'm sure Nami and Usopp and Chopper would be like, take it, we'd have immunity. I don't Luffy's think just so. just going to tear up the letter. I don't think they'd even, they'd even humor it either. I don't think any of the Straw Hats, it, like, they, they show comedic amounts of uh, cowardice and everything like that, but when it comes to something like that, I don't think even Usopp would even suggest to Luffy to take the offer, because mm. he knows how it would look 
It's just they have their heart set on Pirate King and Pirate King's crew. It's either that or die. Yeah, you know, after the timescape, a lot of the Straw Hats have been preaching that. Do you feel? Kaizoku onnaru otoko da. <laughs> yeah, like Luffy's men have become. There, yeah, a lot of That's the, the weaker members of the Straw Hat crew, I feel like, on top of like getting new powers or new tools, they've also strengthened a lot of their resolve. They've been they've been through the ringer a bit, and then they've had their break where they trained and like reinforced their abilities. And now I feel like they're a lot more confident. And even if they know they're getting overpowered, they won't back down anymore. They won't back. Yeah, and they have complete trust in Luffy, which is awesome. You know, earlier on in the series against Crocodile and against Anel, it everyone was hopeful, but it was still a gamble. Like a rookie going up against a warlord or a, a god or whatever. Absolutely. But now they're confident. They're like, yeah. Luffy's going to go in there and he will take care of they this. Just, yeah, they just think, yeah, they, will, they will persevere. And, I mean, evidence shows. No matter how, <laughs> how stacked the odds are, plot armor aside, obviously, we all know Luffy's going to be the Pirate King at the end of it all. But plot armor aside, I just feel like the, the Straw Hats just seem to have a lot of, well, like they said in this, uh, in this chapter, miracles happen around the Straw Hats. Doesn't yeah. matter how outmatched they are. Somehow they'll make a right ally or an accident will happen that throws things into disarray. And now you have Sanji swearing that he's going to save Luffy from that horrendous situation after he beats Katakori. And it's just, I, I wonder how Sanji's going to do it. I think, yeah, I, I want to get to that. Maybe we should start, there's so much in this chapter. Yeah. You said it yourself, panel for panel. Maybe panel we should panel. start at the beginning and work our way through. We'll <laughs> get to Sanji at some point. Um, so chapter 894, five minutes after midnight, 12.05 a.m. Um, so t mentioning perseverance, Luffy's just eating hit so many hits. after hit of just... block mochi. And the whole time, apparently, he's thinking about going snake man. So <laughs> <laughs> he's in the middle of getting hit in the head, concussion after concussion, bleeding like a stuck pig. He's just thinking, how can I transform into something cool? Yeah, so this is some, something I mentioned to um, a Redditor today on the One Piece Reddit. Um, he was talking about why Luffy waits so long to use Gear 4, and I said because it drains him completely of Aki. He's got to know that Gear 4 is going to be able Absolutely. to finish. That's his ace in the hole. He after had to that, retreat the first time after he used Gear 4. That was the only intermission between the whole match that they've had this entire time, was when he had to retreat after, after he used Gear 4 the first time. Yeah. Um, so he's been saving Snake Man, um, and I think at this point it's it's do or die. Like Absolutely. after I think everything is going to be settled in the next chapter between Katakuri and Luffy, and one of them is going to remain. And honestly, I don't know that Luffy's going to win at this. He's going to win. He's going to win, and I think that for several reasons, besides the fact that I think like that's the only way Luffy gets out of this. I also think. They had a brief exchange that seemed, if you notice, uh, during the last page, they seemed to have a brief exchange that was like half-finished sentences. And that yeah. was their, their own haki, observing what each other is going to say. It, yeah, it was super weird, and I read two different translations of it, and it was still like a little confusing, but yeah. it's because they're right they're on just, top yeah, of each other. They're on right on top of each other's levels. And the very last panel, you see Katakori's face... When Luffy says Snake Man, he has a very serious look. He also has the telltale lines through his eyes. I feel like he knows mm. what's coming, and he's he knows that he might not make it. He might not come out on top of this, but he's resigned himself to fight. Yeah. I, I feel like he has a look where he sees what Luffy's going to do, and he knows he can't match it. If you also notice, Luffy's wheezing. Katakori's panting, small difference I guess there, but they're also, they have the wiggly lines around their bodies. Both of them are exhausted. Yeah. And you know Katakori has no more big tricks up his sleeve. And this is Luffy's one big I, trick. I think we've seen them all. I, I really respect With Katakori. the grilled mochi? Oh That's my god! Joke. Can we talk about grilled mochi? <laughs> Red Hawk. First of all, look at some <laughs> pictures of yeah, his own Red Hawk, Android 16, Rocket Fist. Rocket Punch! Wow, really? That is so cool! It was uh, great. It was so Complete cool. with bubbly cheese mochi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> delicious. Um, first of all, looked up some pictures of grilled mochi. Looks delicious. It's just <laughs> like a sweet, sticky little rice cake. Um... 
Oh, just a devastating blow to Luffy. And I love that but coming. He shrugs it off pretty well. I mean, he's he, hurt by his it, of eyes course, go but white. Yeah. He got hurt worse with the trident blow, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the trident for a second, but while we're talking about Grill Mochi, Grill I love that Mochi. Luffy just comes back bursting out of the rubble. And I don't know if it's dust or if it's just full body gear, too, but you can see like the plumes of smoke coming off yeah. him. Yeah. And then if you notice, Katakori still tried to hit him, and Luffy just snuck in with the counter. Absolutely. Um, and let's also talk about how that was the only blow Luffy landed this chapter, and Katakori, you see him yeah. land 10. Yeah. yeah. So, this, was, this whole chapter was just watching. I feel like this chapter was kind of setting up like how Luffy's like miraculously going to come out on top, because it keeps showing everybody, everything's going well for the Straw Hats, except for Luffy. The, the crew's away. They've got. They're heading towards the rendezvous point. Sanji's fine. He's going to try to rescue Luffy. Big Mom's they're, weak. The Big Mom's weak and out of their way and going to stay out of the way for a little while longer. Uh, the fire tank pirates are fine. They're leading Big Mom away. And <laughs> they, they repaired their ship. They quick. even said like, "It's no problem. We're cool right now." <laughs> they they admitted that much. But Luffy's the only one during this whole chapter who, for every good moment you see uh, the Straw Hats having, you see Luffy get punched in the kidney. Decked in the face. Now he just lost the same tooth he lost earlier this arc. Yeah. Again. <laughs> that tooth's been through the ringer. It barely oh got five God. minutes of daylight. Yeah, so something I was thinking about earlier, when's the last time we saw Luffy take a beating like this? Because uh, honestly Luchi? Luchi was pretty bad. I was thinking Luchi. Luchi was pretty with bad. With the um the shockwave yeah. technique. This is a little bit worse. The, the only because of the trident wound. Other than that, I'd say they're pretty comparable. Um, I was read. I was also reading the One Piece Reddit. Um, they were saying like this is the most beat up Luffy's ever been. I'm not quite sure about that. I don't think this is the worst condition Luffy's ever been in. I feel like um, at the end of the Luchi fight, he couldn't move at all, which was pretty big. At the end of the crocodile fight, he literally had to be saved several times because he was so fucked up. Yeah. That's, that's something I was thinking about. The first time he engages Crocodile and Crocodile impales him and throws him in quicksand. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty bad wound. <laughs> I mean... And then dries him up as a husk. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was still able to survive. I feel like this might be died. the worst beating. But he's still getting up and coming back for more. So I, I feel like it's not the worst condition he's ever been in just because he keeps getting back up. But that just might be a testament to his new like levels of endurance, really. Yeah. Um, Pure damage-wise, I guess this is the worst because Doflamingo, I don't think, hurt him nearly as much as this. No, uh, I don't think so either. And had he scored when Doflamingo was like implanted in the side of the mountain after Luffy bazooked him in year four, if he had scored one more hit, I think he would have finished it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he just would have pile-drived him through the mountain, and that would I, have been the end of it. I think it's very interesting how from the Doflamingo arc, where gear four was introduced, it's already declined from being overpowering Doflamingo. Like, Doflamingo cannot match gear four Luffy at no. all. But now, all of a sudden, gear four Luffy cannot match these new opponents in Big Moms. Like, even Cracker... Gear 4 Luffy was having a hard time without Nami's help. Yeah. Then it was a devil fruit thing. And now with Katakori, Gear 4 just won't work against him. Yeah, I mean, it, that was the only time Luffy kind of had the upper hand, but once Katakori's gained, like, calmed himself down, yeah. gained his focus back, it, it was a stalemate, and Gear 4 th has a time limit. Yeah. Katakori's seems to never run out of mochi. It, I mean, I guess an awakened. Logia fruit user can just though it seems make infinite amounts of its own element. Something weird I wanted to bring up on the One Piece wiki, it says he's a paramecia. Yes, I was gonna bring that up too. It turns out yes he is. He's a paramecia. He's considered a special paramecia. Which is I guess kind of equivalent. Either either that's what they call an awakened paramecia, or that's a subclass, like there's the ancient zone and mythical zone and okay. regular zone. Maybe it's um, because that's interesting, because I noticed after the Grill Mochi, he's he missing an arm, arm. Yeah. and he it wasn't like a normal, like, Logia. Like, usually Logia users don't even, like, acknowledge their regeneration. It's just, yeah. like, um, subconscious. But he watched his own arm grow back. Yeah, I think he has to will it. Um, that's part of the special paramecia, including being able also to turn his surroundings into the Mochi. It makes sense, though, that if he can turn, like, you know, this camera into a pure Mochi... <laughs> 
he could no, also my camera. <laughs> he could also regrow a limb. I mean, why wouldn't he be able to use the mochi that he just created out of thin air to regrow something? Yeah. But yeah, it turns out he is a paramecia and really opens the door for what paramecias can do. Are we looking? It's not. Oh yeah, we're, we're looking, looking good. I just want to double check. We we've had we filmed stuff before where the Last mic time. wasn't on. We want to double check. Hey, we're It'll episode two. If you folks gonna hear all these wonderful words, <laughs> it'd be it'd be rough. Yeah, hey, we're talking peace. playing to an all deaf audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, category special paramecia. Hopefully, we'll see more of that. Yeah. yeah. So, is, let's. Is Snake Man Luffy's awakened form? I think it's 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 a slimmer, looser gear for it. Yeah. Like a little more elastic. Like someone posted this today of Luffy's gum gum space out where he's all loose fighting and now and dodging. Yeah. Maybe it's it's kind of a blend where he's still wiggly, but he's doing um what was it, the the jet colvin when his gear four the yeah. arm starts dashing around. Maybe it's a, a blend of that, like a lighter, more flexible Luffy. Who could cover more ground? I definitely think yes. Yeah. Skinnier, it's going. I can't see it not being goofy looking, especially snake because man. yeah, Snake Man. How you could make it look cool, but I just don't think that's going to be Luffy's way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could see him being almost as tall as Katakuri now. Super skinny, like super hardened haki that's very malleable. Mm. Like. It just seems like because he named it Snake Man, snakes can, you know, wiggle around, move every muscle of their body. Just like that. Every time you throw a blow at him in Snake Man, he just wiggles around it, either catches you, entraps you, or dodges it altogether. Yeah. I, w I was looking forward to some entrapment, maybe wrapping him up and then gum gum. Bell. gum yeah, we haven't seen a new awakened gum gum bell. <laughs> Luffy, in Gear 4, Dofi tries to, like, um like shield himself with the strings and Luffy headbutts the strings and ruptures those. I would love to see Katakuri if, eat one of those and break his yeah, like Yeah, what if teeth Luffy off? broke his teeth? It, oh, would he be doing him a favor? I can't <laughs> wait to see Katakuri's mouth agape and just broken teeth um, all over the place. Also though, Katakuri's obviously the main focus here. Smoothie got a little quick couple licks in in this chapter as well. It turns out that her smoothie power, I assume it's a smoothie power. Um, like a juice power? I think maybe Do we she know calls specifically it, what a fruit is? I'm going to look this up. Uh, she has the juice, juiced fruit? I, juice I guess fruit? like a juice, juice fruit. Definitely a paramecia. I suppose um, one of her powers is just, I, I'm sure she calls it super smoothie or super juice or something <laughs> like that, where she just gets a kale blaster. Big, a kale blaster. <laughs> Kale enema. What? <laughs> One of my coworkers was talking today. She's like, I, I got like a kale blaster shake kale blaster. from Whole Foods, and That's, like I had to ugh. call out of work the next yeah. day. I was like, what? I don't drink anything but blaster in the name. Blasting that. Uh. That's not a verb I want in going on in my body. I don't want to be blasting anything kale other blaster. than sweet. One Piece knowledge. <laughs> I want that blasted at me. I want that going. Speed of sound hit me in the mouth. <laughs> oh, man. So, I feel like next week... Uh, we're getting off topic. Smoothie. Okay. Smoothie, yes. First of all, hottest of all the sisters. Of all the Charlotte sisters, smoothie. Also the thickest. The, oh, mm, <laughs> that butt. We're going to talk about Charlotte Smoothie's butt for a little bit. Uh, love the bathing suit. Really nice crop. Going down she knows how to she knows how to rock it. Mm, what a woman! Stay, clocking in at like sixteen and a half feet tall. I think or, is the official or taller number. as she wants apparently. Yeah. Okay, so I was talking to a guy on Reddit. I'm sorry, I don't I don't have my computer in front of me. If you know who you are, thanks for chatting. Um, he was mentioning like how could she absorb seawater, and I kind of brought up the point absorb seawater. Well, because they're on a ship. And then I brought up the point that deep into Big Mom's territory, the water's actually syrup. Mm, I don't, I'm not sure if that... Uh, is it just syrup? And if so, how does that even work? Did you drain the seawater out of that portion of the ocean? Did you wall off the ocean and then drain it and fill it with syrup? Or is it seawater... So your Maybe it was desalinated. Maybe... Because you've seen... Bing Mom's ingenuity. I would love for an explanation about this. I would, yeah, I would love to. Um, so, so, an idea that I had just now. Um, Big Mom's uh, oh, innovation and construction potential knows no limits. If she was able to recreate to this inch 
Caesar Clown's factory out of candy, she could probably make a massive desalination machine. And she's been emperor over Totland for decades. Start she's desalinating the, the water, Struisen, once the salt's out of it, that kind of takes out the seawater, it's just regular water, he could just turn it into syrup. Or maybe even just mix in sugar, maybe it was an actual recipe, maybe there's no devil fruits involved. But I'm sure Big Mom, being her crazy self, was like, I want the ocean to be syrup! And they made it and happen. And he says, sure. <laughs> yeah, it, they right, definitely I mean, have a lot of te technological capabilities, Big Mom. And they just wanted to expand on that, which is why they wanted the Vin Smokes. And yeah. having a man who has the the food, food, fruit, whatever Struzan's fruit is. Ridiculous. So, yeah, to be able to transform anything to food has definitely played a huge role. I mean, when Luffy... It's built her empire. Absolutely. Without that, she would have died before she even got the chance to build an empire. Yeah, he was able to give Big Mom sustenance throughout her young life and kind of guide her along. And perhaps give her her first child. Maybe. Ooh. There was a little theory that Paris Perro looks a lot like him. I get similar noses. And they also, he's the eldest. That guy's very old. So is Big Mom. Well, I'm, he was his father. I'm not, I don't think Big Mom makes kids traditionally. I'm not sure anymore. I, I really think don't she think might. she does. It, maybe. I, I'm not sure though. It, it showed the one, the king that got his head. Yeah. It showed him talking to Big Mom when she was younger, and it seemed like they had an actual relationship at some point. Yeah. I, th I think there's a birth, but I don't think they're conceived conventionally. I think it has something to do with the soul. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I have a feeling we're going to find out at some point. That would Also, be. speaking of Big Mom's kids, we saw a set of eight today. We saw a lot of Big Mom's family. Yeah. Everybody's here. I seriously don't... We including a former that. suite commander, the one that Aruge... Am I pronouncing that right? Aruge? Aruge? Aruge, Aruge yeah. Aruge? We the know one that he beat about. in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The Mad Monk. Um, yeah, Crazy. with a $600 million bounty. Not bad. That's nothing to scoff at. It's no. not bad. You, he's, got, he's got his chops now. $600 million bounty, you beat him. Fuck you, Snack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, so he should, shame. I like he that. should know more than anybody what's about to happen. In fact, I think he might even have a little bit of an idea because it shows in the one panel that he's in, it shows him dot dot dot, a lot of thinking going on, and then he eventually says, deep. one of the worst generation, huh? I think he knows from the beatdown yeah. that no matter what the odds might look like, don't underestimate them. Yeah, if you got smacked around by Ruge. These I, are the people that are going to replace the warlords, replace the emperors, replace every pirate organization that's currently out there. Yeah. Luffy and the supernovas. I like that you said Luffy and the supernovas. Exactly, because Luffy's the, Luffy's the pirate king. Supernovas, allied to him or not, rivals, they're never going to be quite on his level. No. What I'm hoping to see a lot more of, uh, just to jump ahead to the quick Wano arc, I want to see more of Basil Hawkins. I love that guy. My favorite supernova. Oh, Basil Hawkins. Oh, yeah, because he's Saito. He's so Kaido. cool. Yeah. He didn't really have a choice. No. <laughs> he got conscripted. <laughs> he got conscripted into Kaido, which is weird because Kaido seems to only like Zoans, but I guess anybody can be a slave. Yeah. <laughs> a thrall. A thrall um, to... It's not that bad, I guess. <laughs> I would love to see more Hawkins. I'd, I'd love for Hawkins to betray Kaido. Um, I can't so. see any version where he doesn't betray Kaido. Just waiting for an opportunity. Absolutely. And it seems like maybe he has some, maybe he can help Luffy a little bit with his observation hockey. He predicts the future. He knows about the future. Yeah. I, maybe a slightly different method, but I wouldn't be surprised if on top of his devil fruit, he reinforces his prediction powers with color of observation. Mm. And that's his main focus as well. Maybe, yeah, that'd be really cool. Maybe he helps, like, Enforce that power with the magic of the tarot cards or something. Exactly. Yeah, they I'd be very interested to find out exactly what kind of devil fruit he has too. I think most people assume it's just going to be called the voodoo fruit, but it might be like that just the seems... hair hair fruit. Yeah, or witch doctor fruit. <laughs> <laughs> too specific. The, Oda, not. An, I think it's the exact opposite of specific. I think it's way too like broad. Like witch doctor fruit. Like everybody else has the string or the cloth or the rubber. Like, witch doctor, that could mean anything. Mm, yeah. I, my money is or on voodoo. the hair hair fruit. Because hair hair fruit. Voodoo dolls, yeah. traditionally made of hair. In the one, um, when he fights the pacifista, you see, like, 
that yeah. kind of threads come over him. Um, and I mean, for like a mage sorcerer or wish doctor to have the hair hair fruit, you could take full advantage of that. Absolutely. Um, so going off of fruits, I'm, I'm so stoked to see more of Big Mom's children because we've seen a ton of overpowered fruits. Mm. Uh, so far in our career. More food-based fruits coming your way. More fruit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll see Strawberry Man. <laughs> Strawberry Commander Jam. Commander Jam, he's the Minister of Jam. Uh, he's absolutely delicious. Mistress Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> She's very expensive. <laughs> mostly gloop. Mo- mostly gloop that I spoon into my mouth every night. Yum. Um, yeah, so so to see more fruits. Um, something that's really cool in the anime... Uh, Aruge beats Snack, you don't see it, mm. but then Cracker shows up on Aruge's ship while he's still wounded, and just wipes the floor with him. It oh, wasn't in the manga, boy. but it was in the anime. Huh. Um, Interesting. Worth a watch, yeah. It's it's a real quick bit, and he just gets smacked around by Big Cracker. Is that now? I don't know. It just seems odd. Like, why why not even mention it in the manga? I'm not sure well, if they, they mentioned, mentioned it in the manga. They mentioned that they got revenged on. I always thought that when you see Arug or Rouge um, on the Cloud Island and he's all bandaged up, I assume that was from his fight with Snack. No, Cracker but finished him off okay. and drove him off. Yeah, interesting. Um, almost positive that it's canon in the manga, and it's canon in the show. I'd like to know his motives. Why was he fucking with Big Mom? Why? Hmm. With just his crew, he must have known it wasn't going to go his way in the end. What was he after? Poneglyphs, maybe. Perhaps, but... Well, wh- why would he... Wa- oh, well, we know nothing about his powers, his motivations. I think it's very interesting. And Rolf, though. Yeah, I think it's very interesting that he's from Skypea. I wonder what he would have to say about um Enel or any of the... If he even knows about those events. Yeah. Or what his connection is, or if he's from an, a different Sky Island altogether. Maybe he's not from Skypea. Maybe there's more the, in the clouds. That's a really good point. That's really cool. Mm. I never thought of that. It would um, be interesting. Yeah. I, I have a feeling we're going to find out at some point. He's got a role to play. Can he fly? No. He's got no, little he's wings. He's got little baby he's wings. He's got little baby he's wings. He's a big guy, little baby <laughs> wings. Well, you know, you never know with o- Oda's proportions. <laughs> Just because an appendage is small doesn't mean that it can't do massive damage. For some reason, even though, like, Jack will have 50-inch biceps, he'll land a kick and somehow send you to five buildings, and that's about this wide, his shin. Makes no sense. Jack, I can't wait to see more Jack. Who do you think would win, Katakori or Jack the Drought? I feel like I want to go with Jack. I might be a little biased because I think Jack is pretty cool. I but Jack. I just feel like Jack has shown such a level of endurance that maybe Katakori, of course, would give him a very hard time, but I just feel like Jack would just ignore a certain amount of attacks, tank them, as seems to be his main focus, and it, predict the future or not. If he tanks your attacks and runs at you and gets you in a bear hug, it's over. Yeah. Just you, you can't help but be Sickles crushed. you across the chest. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be devastating. Um, but we'll see. I think Jack is going to find his match in Zoro. I think Zoro's going to fight Jack. One of I, I mean, yeah, that would be a great matchup, and I, I think feel the like entire they, community. I feel like they're well matched it. up in that regard. I yeah, everybody wants to see that. Every One Piece fan is just. And although we haven't game. seen the calam- the rest of the calamities yet, I'm assuming Jack is Kaido's strongest calamity. I mm-hmm. assume we inter- we were introduced to the strongest one first. Or at least the at the very least the most ruthless. Yeah, I which can see that. Can definitely play in more. I can absolutely see that. Talking about the Straw Hats, uh, once again running away from Big Mom, you see uh, Carrot is back in action, and yeah. you get a little interesting unanswered question from Chopper, where he says, "Can Neka uh, Neka Mamushi Neka and, Mamushi and, and, uh, 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 Dog Storm and Cat Viper?" Yeah, That's yeah, the there translation. We go. There we go. Yes. Can they transform? And that question goes unanswered. I think obviously the answer is yes. Yeah. But that would be huge. How strong would those guys be under a full moon? Ridiculous. I, I, I think had there been a full moon when Jack the Drown invaded Zoe, it would have been a different outcome. In fact, didn't didn't one of them mention that? Didn't one of them say something about a full moon? Or I that, think it was Pedro. 
Or no, no, no. Pedro? It was dog. It was dog storm. He was like, next time we'll have an ace up our sleeve. Ah. So they maybe, might be waiting for the perfect opportunity to engage him again. Maybe even um, Jack knew about this. Maybe he knew, and that's why he used the poison gas. And he didn't. He told when his soldiers questioned why he was using the poison gas, he masqueraded it as he's getting impatient. But maybe, just maybe, he was scared. Yeah. That he might not, because it wouldn't just be those two, though. That would probably be enough. An entire island of minks, or at least a, a decent enough percentage of them. Could probably also make this transformation. Yeah, and just completely. I mean, his if a rabbit mink can make the transformation, I don't see why. Like, it's not specific to like predatorial. No, minks no, no, or no. Like I that. just think that some minks can, just can't manage it. Just like some mm. some humans can't manage hot cake. Okay, I just yeah, think yeah. some minks just can't do it. And um, I think Pedro mentioned in that little flashback with Carrot that she has an affinity towards this, or she's like good at it, or better than some. Mm. But yeah, it would uh, be a big thing, and I hope it does uh, play into it. Because what, they're both just hanging out on Zoe now, or are they well, planning on going somewhere? No, I think Dogstorm staying on Zoe, and Cat Viper went to go find Marco. And I'm not sure what... Mm. I, I have the the picture of like the teams. Remember they went off in groups? Right, yes. It's like it's Law been so and long. Zoro. Yeah, it's Oda, been... it's been so long. <laughs> starting to forget things it, it's so bittersweet like i love the details and i love the time that it takes to tell the story from every perspective but at the same point in time like it's been two years yeah um it's it been it's been almost it's been over 90 chapters since we first saw jack Maybe that's why I developed this little theory about the Tots and how they're going to play a part by being bodyguards in the Reverie, just because I feel like they were completely useless throughout the whole Doflamingo arc, and I'm just desperately hoping that they make a big comeback here and, you know, kind of prove themselves. They played their little role. They were just a sideshow. Yeah. You could have <laughs> taken them out completely. Yeah. Well, we needed them to unlock the door. Yeah, and get the, the smile and and, and, oh, get, and, and heal all the straw hats with the magic tears. Oh yeah, magic! <laughs> come on, man, magic, magic tears. tears. Stupid. Man, Sherry's so cute. <laughs> okay, so you're saying Luffy's walking out of that mirror and Katakuri's going out first. Katakuri's landing on his back. Oh yeah. He's landing on his back in front of the entire extended family. And that's going to be the big shock that puts them all in a vulnerable position. And at that very moment, Sanji, the Vin smokes, everything's going to erupt from there. Yeah. And then I think it's going to end with a big coup de burst, sending the ship a mile away. And there, there starts uh, the getaway. Yeah. I think everybody is going to get away except maybe Judge. Maybe Judge will stay behind and die. I could see that. Um sacrificing himself yeah there's got to be some sort of self-destruct mechanism on one of those absolutely things. yeah come on they can't just let that technology fall into enemy hands if no. one of them falls in the battlefield i don't think this is the end of the germa though no definitely not i think this is well this is the end of what the germa used to be mm. i think the germa are going to be forced to make some changes yeah, so I've been rereading. Oh, here, no a little longer so third Reiki. <laughs> Gonna have to tone that down. Yeah, because guess what? If you wanted to destroy a ground fleet, they kind of they they have a thing against Nazis. Turn down the Nazi dial a just a little bit. bit. Come on, uh. well, Luffy has, is pretty loose with the rules, but he can't be a Nazi. <laughs> we're pirates, okay? We're not Nazis, Gurma. Uh, so a little plug-in. Just got volume eighty-five. Um, so it does got pretty sweet volume. New volume smell. Smells. Oh, what. Oh, delicious. Smells um, like Big Mom's Queefs. Yup. Matt just said volume 85 smells like air exiting Big Mom's vagina. So, in this, after rajin has been shot and Sanji's kind of filling Rajin in what had happened, she says that she's going to go to the wedding because she deserves to die. That the Gurma is evil and that they shed so, many, so much blood following their father's commands. And that she deserves to die. Maybe this will give her an opportunity... To take the helm of the family. Oh, I, I, th I think, think she so. would lead. I don't. I don't think Ichi. No, I don't would think lead. the brothers care about leading. They're they're just so detached. I feel like they're they're a victim of their own 
um, upbringing with their whole genetic engineering, they were complete successes. They have zero emotion. Mm -hmm. And that even showed when they were dying, when they were laughing about it, saying, oh, you got us. Yeah. And then they were about to get shot in the back of the head. I don't think leadership is... Uh, meanwhile, uh, she seems to show some emotion throughout the entire yeah, childhood. Absolutely. And it's possible that Judge has already instructed them, like, should I fall, Rach uh, will take She seems the most tactically minded person out yeah. of all of them. Everybody else, they just love a good fight, and they're very good at fighting. Yeah. And that's their main focus. She actually, you know, plans out the battles, plans out how they're going to get paid, how they're going to go about <laughs> threatening these people or controlling yeah. this area. Um, Plus, she's got the poison. And I feel like poison users are usually smart people in mangas. Like, if you're, if you're involved in some kind of poison, usually you're a more st studious type. Yeah, it's a very delicate art form. Yeah, exactly. It's more Except so, Magellan, who just drank poison and spent half the day sh himself. He probably bought it. He must have taken in some paperwork into this <laughs> with him. He got some shit done. <laughs> he got some shit done. <laughs> but I, but I can't wait to edit Bam. all this out. I let one <laughs> go in the last video. It was a complete accident. Didn't even hear it. Oops. I'll be careful. <laughs> Sorry, uh, kids. Um... Yeah, so I can see Rage taking the helm, um, kind of accepting that role, and trying to maybe, not necessarily not be mercenaries. Um, just but be friendly trying to, mercenaries. Trying to right some of the wrongs. Not going back, but trying just... Trying to right some of their wrongs. Trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Nazi fun. Uh, got to once in Go back for Nazi. more. I might think of some more. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned for more Nazi stuff. That's what you came to this yeah, channel for. The Warlords Council, aka the Hitler Hour. <laughs> I mean, they're the world government. They're not that great. No, no. They voided out an entire century for a reason. I don't think it's because they threw a huge tea party for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they threw a hundred year canker. Does everybody forget about this hundred years? <laughs> Nothing happened. Don't worry about it. Nobody got in trouble. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, yeah, so I totally forgot about the Gurma. They're totally going to be involved in the Yeah, they haven't been so. seen since the wedding, but they must have escaped. Big Mom's forces are all well, busy now. No, no, no. Dude, you're totally wrong. Remember, um, Big Mom's forces go after them with, like, Colonel Custer. Right, yes. And they beat, uh, uh, Niji pretends right. to be talking to him. Yep. And they're standing on a mound of corpses. Why? First of all, I don't know. It seems like Big Mom did her research on this family. She knew who the big players in the family were, how to entice them into the, into their, uh, under her wing how to trap them, what they were capable of, what she wanted from them. So why did she think it was okay just to send this one fleet against the entire Gurma force? She knew what they could do. She should know that th that's not enough. You need at least one sweet commander there. Well, let's, let's think about this for a second. Big Mom didn't send them after the Gurma. Right, right. Montior, who's extremely intelligent and well-read, um, Katakori was going after Straw Hat. And Smoothie, I think, was sent to, like, ready the fleets to pursue. Uh, ooh, we've got a visitor. Oh, oh yeah, so, so the crew is split up. up. Cracker's not in the picture. So I think they thought the Gurma were weakened, and a common theme we've seen throughout this arc is Underestimate. underestimating your enemy. It's ridiculous. Time and time again. It just also... it. it also shows that while well, Big Mom's rep is already pretty much completely destroyed, even within her own family. Like, even her own family, it seems to be when they're all gathered outside this mirror, they're making light of it, they're making fun of it, and they just seem like they're not even taking Mama seriously as much anymore. It, it, because they just can't believe that all of this is getting called for less than ten people. Yeah. Seriously, and it, it's hard when your supreme leader and the rock of your family goes off into a tantrum that lasts for a day and is completely <laughs> unable to, like, barely communicate and can't listen, just is, in a complete rage. Is Big Mom stronger or weaker right now? Weaker. Maybe, but she's so crazed that I feel like it's kind of like if you if you corner a wild an injured wild animal. Like, mm. it it's, might be weaker physically, but it's just more crazed and more unpredictable. I just feel like Big Mom, she might be weakened physically, but I just feel like just her rage and her unpredictability right now makes her even more dangerous than normal. 
Yeah. yeah so not really to point. mention, she looks crazy right now. Oh, yeah. So skinny. The hair's down. It's no longer poofy. Drooling. Her conditioner ran out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drooling. She's got the swirly Na eyes. Napoleon has his own mouth with Napoleon's, teeth. Napoleon's, he looks like he loves to kill people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, love the Napoleon's I think it would be eyes. pretty funny if Big Mom kills somebody by slashing them at them with their sword, with her sword, and the sword, instead of slashing them, takes a bite out of them. Oh. <laughs> What a big mom move. My sword <laughs> took a bite out of somebody. My um, sword eats people, literally. Yeah, dude, you bring up a really good point. She's so unpredictable right She's now. so crazed. And that's the title of a chapter is like, Mama Unknown or whatever, where Prospero is like, we don't know this woman right They've now. never been in this situation before. Yeah. They've never had her go on a tantrum this bad. I'm, I'm excited to see her eat this cake and pass out, like sure. Sanji claimed. I think he he's gonna live up. Yeah, this cake. I think it will it will definitely. It almost knocked out the fire tank pirates, and yeah. they're not even they're not even so obsessed with sweets as Big Mom is. Oh, they're just yeah. normal people that like normal food. They're not starving <laughs> to death. Like yeah. Big Mom is. <laughs> I'm just so excited for next um, week. No, no break is very good news. Though I can't imagine the cliffhanger that's going to come after this next chapter. Yeah. It's going to be a huge, um, huge cliffhanger. Yeah, I, I think the chapter needs to... Like, this fight needs to end next chapter. They both said it, like, this is the end. They yeah. both accepted it. It's going to be a final exchange. I would like to see at least two chapters of the fight, though. Just because I want to see a lot of Snake Man. I want to see if this is something Luffy's going to bring out a lot now. Or mm. is he going to try to merge them later? I like this. It shows, it shows like, training during the fight and everything. So that way, when they get back on the ship and they arrive in Wano, and if Luffy has a whole new bag of tricks by then, it makes sense. Because he's had time to develop the skills during the fight and then the downtime to work on how he's going to mesh them together. Or yeah. do something better. Or improve on his durability. Because when Gear 2 was first introduced, Luchi mentioned that it does a lot of stress on Luffy's body and it shortens his lifespan. But now you see Luffy go Gear 2 effortlessly all the time. It yeah. doesn't seem to affect him in the least bit. He so I feel like he's developed past that point And I feel like we might see that with Gear 4. Where he can hold it for a lot longer. Yeah, a lot longer. He's he's really pushing himself and building up his endurance. Yeah, I could totally see that. And Luffy also, after the time skip, did a great job of concentrating Gear Two just in a certain limbs rather than going yes. full body. Yeah, that and is going all cool. out. Yeah, just using it in short instances. Um, yeah, I think overall, I mean, again, Rip Pedro, but hmm. I think the Straw Hats have kind of uh, gotten a buff. This arc between Jimbe and Luffy conditioning his observation of Haki in the most this brutal has been way huge possible. For Luffy, yeah, running the um, gauntlet, trial by blood. Yeah, and once again, we've got the Germas as a, a kind of like pseudo ally. Yeah, they're gonna um, they're gonna make a play. They're they're gonna be one of those reluctant allies to the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Not quite the not quite in the fleet, but they're they're there when you really need them. Yeah, I can see them fighting along the alongside of the Straw Hats, not because they want to do it for Luffy, but because they have something else to gain. Oh, yeah. Again, Luffy, another common Luffy enemy. Could, they wanted their own country. They want their homeland back, and I feel like Luffy could give that to them. Mm. Pretty effortlessly. I don't feel like Luffy would find any big deal in just giving them an, an island to rule. <laughs> when it becomes Pirate King. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even before You just gotta follow his rules. He can. He, Luffy has legitimate territory now. He could, if he wanted to play more of a role in his own grand fleet, he could. Yeah. He, absolutely, Who yeah. knows the kind of resources he can really pull in already. He's already got the entire Hapo army at his beck oh, and call. yeah, that's a few thousand men, right? Yeah. And if they're all hot they're key users with the shockwave technique. They seem to be a pretty formidable force. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see more Bartolomeo. <laughs> I want to see Shanks interact He's, with him in a cover story arc. I, I love his fruit. I love his character. He's great. He's never, so far, he has never been challenged in a fight. Like, against the Burst Man, it was mostly because he didn't want Nico Robin to get the slightest scratch on her that he was yeah. having such a hard time. But when it came down to actually fighting him, it wasn't that bad. I think one-on-one, -on -one, 
Bartolomeo's fruit was a great counter to his, Gradius. His fruit is a great counter to almost anything, <laughs> it seems like. Nothing's come close to even breaking it. A King's Punch did yeah. not even phase him. I wonder if Katakuri's uh, spear technique could break it. Probably I feel, not. I, I wonder, because it just seems like so far he's never had the slightest pressure against it. It's never even so much as cracked or shuddered when something hit against yeah. it, no matter how strong. I can't wait to see more of him. He's great. Yeah, he's been in like the top 10 on the popularity contest for like two contests. Now. He took down a Vice Admiral off panel. <laughs> off panel. And I know Vice Admirals are not very impressive anymore. Well, some of them are, some of them aren't. They're like supernova. Uh, I mean, they're like warlords now, where there's such a huge difference in skill between certain warlords. You have someone like Crocodile, and then you have someone like Mihawk. Yeah, uh, there's a huge gap. Um. Yeah, we can't have any East Blue Vice Admirals walking around here. Like, we need some New World, like, hard-hitting mofos. I wonder if, um, do you think in the Wano arc, you think uh, Whitebeard's supposed bastard son is going to play a role in this? We haven't seen him in a while, and he seems pretty strong. I mean, how many, <laughs> how many more variables and characters can we involve in Wano? So many. <laughs> oh, so I, many. I really don't know. I think he. Wano's the start to the Great War, the next Marineford. This is where it, I don't feel like the events in Wano will just keep carrying over. I don't. I feel like the war the war starts in Wano and spills out over the entire New World. It doesn't start and end in Wano. I think yeah. I I could totally see that. I could see after Kaido is beaten or heavily crippled and or both sides have taken heavy losses. I could see a Kainu trying to capitalize on that yeah, oh, yeah. and finally mobilizing his fleet. Maybe this is what the Marines have been waiting for. Maybe they've been letting the um, Emperors gather strength in hopes that they could maybe capitalize on something. If they if Big Mom and Kaido somehow clashed, maybe they were hoping that would happen and then capitalize on both weaknesses. Yeah. Try to clear the board of the big players in the pirate world right, in one sweep. Yeah, it seems like an Akinu kind of move. Absolutely. Why, why fight other. them? Yeah, exactly. Why let the pirates kill each other? So, after this arc, Luffy's going to Wano. I'm sure Big Mom's got eyes and ears everywhere. She's going to find out where they are. She's probably going to go after them. Exactly. Kaido occupies Wano currently. Do you think there's going to be a clash there? Oh, absolutely. I don't, I don't see Big Mom sitting out until Luffy decides he wants to engage her again. I think once she comes to and realizes that her entire island and her forces have been decimated, she's going to go after her. Oh, absolutely. That's she, absolutely. It's her new mission in life. After, well, first she's going to take a little detour to Fisherman Island, destroy it. Wreck it. <laughs> As uh, Shirley predicted. Though, honestly, is it Luffy's fault or is it Jinbei's? Jinbei's the one that told her to her face, I'm not in your crew anymore. But I'm she joining was, was going to punish... Jimbe for that. She wasn't gonna punch Fishman Island. Maybe. I, I don't know. She still wanted the Sun Pirates. I think because they make great candy. I, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> the sweets. <laughs> mm, the salt water's mm, happy. So good. Delish. I think she's gonna go after Big Mom's Island. One because that's where Luffy picked a fight with her and said, "I'm taking your territory." That was like Luffy's first advance against her. Mm. And I still think the Sun Pirates. Are around and I think they're gonna play a role in Luffy's and the uh, the Straw Hat Pirates final escape. I could see a massive tidal wave coming over and washing over Big Mom's ships or washing over uh, Coco Island or something just helping them escape. Yeah they've um, already done so much just getting rid of the sea slugs is enough to just give them the whole chance that they have right now. Yeah and they mentioned that again in this chapter. Yeah, the sea slugs who yeah, knew? It was a huge problem and honestly, I feel also like... Also another crew member kind of um, kind of dissing Big Mom a little bit by saying, I can't believe just the sea slugs being deactivated is this inconvenient for us. Like, they're starting to... Her own children are starting to get in little jabs while she's gone and losing control of her territory. That's it. Like, Big Mom was kind of just really comfortable. Like, yeah. sitting, literally sitting fat on the throne, uh, assuming that category smoothie and cracker could just take care of it. Why wouldn't you? That <laughs> yeah, I mean, 800 million, 900 million, billion dollar bounties. Yeah, they should be able to mm. get some work done. And you, on top of that, you have another 79 kids. Yeah, all of which, each a lot of, of which have over 100 million each. Oh, yeah. Each, at least. We've seen that pretty consistently. Yeah. Even um, some no-names, like that guy, um, that bobbin dude. 
that Sanji kicked real quick, he had over a hundred million dollar bounty. Oh yeah. And he was nothing. Yeah. He was just nothing. He was you won't even he notice this guy. Gun Luffy could have beaten him before he got the going Mary. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a hundred million. I think that was just a default bounty for yeah. being Big Mom's son. Is a hundred million right off the bat. The second you're conceived, Marines want you dead. I don't. I don't think he's Big Mom's son. I is, think he's like that, a Peekums. He didn't have like uh, a son number. Like uh, all the okay. all the children are numbered. Uh, how else would you keep track of them? Even worse. But like Baron Tamago. Four hundred million dollar bounty. Yeah, it's That's not that good. It's huge. How did they get these bounties? I think it does have to do with just being allied or being uh, a sibling uh, or um, a son or daughter of Big Mom. I feel like that's a big part of it. Just okay. just knowing that she's in the pirate, that you're in her pirate crew. I feel like that automatically gives you a big bounty just because they want to take you out as much as yeah. possible. Also, something I was thinking about: Totland wasn't Totland forever. These islands had to be conquered. Um, yeah. Unwilling Pacified. occupants had to be destroyed, pacified. And also, like, we saw this when they were gathering ingredients, Big Mom sent her kids out, and they were just massacring island after island. Maybe a lot of these, yeah, that was a, that was a crash upstairs. No, somebody else. Oh, we've got a visitor. All right, big old booty bounties. Uh, sorry, that was Dave Sunday. Oh, yeah, Dave just got here. Turns out, yeah, yeah, she, she, she sends her... Like, does she just do that for fun? Okay, so yeah, her children massacre these islands. So I'm thinking these m huge bounties that we're seeing probably results of, like, genocides. Because when you think about Absolutely. Luffy's They've bounty, been doing this a long time, too. Most yeah. of them. So Category think about is 48 that. 48 years old. Straw had to manage to accrue their bounties over the period of about, well, over the course of three to four years now. Yeah. But the... Not even. All these big, uh, these big players in the New World, they've had decades, some of them, to get these bounties. Yeah, and Big Mom owns miles worth of oceans. That That's a lot of... Uh, leagues. Leagues. Oh, excuse Leagues. Me. Leagues. A little nautical term. <laughs> that's your fun uh, nautical term. Leagues of ocean. So, I, I think we've pretty much wrapped it up. I'm so excited for next week. Mochi Absolutely. versus Rubber. Snake Man. Gonna have plenty to say about that. Oh, so stick around for next week. We're gonna be covering the fight. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Stay tuned. Later. Have a good one.